There's one word that makes just about everyone's pulse race. The word starts with a T and ends with an EST. In school, testing is a way to see how much knowledge we have. It's also one of the most important parts of being a successful inventor. When inventors are inventing, they never stop and rest because inventors know too well that there's always more to test. You've heard the expression test flight, but how was that accomplished before flight was even possible? In other words, how did the pioneers in aviation, specifically the Wright brothers, Wilbur and Orville, test their technology before it was literally and figuratively off the ground? The Wright's first tests actually took place in Dayton, Ohio, not too far from their home and cycle shop. And they tested with what initially were oversized kites. So how did they graduate from oversized kites to that successful flight at Kitty Hawk in December of 1903? Curator of transportation, Matt Anderson, met me outside the Wright Brothers cycle shop one gray afternoon to explain. Did the Wrights ever think about quitting early on? You know, they had a really bad season in 1901. The glider didn't produce enough lift. It didn't stay in the air as long as they'd hoped. They couldn't control it. So they left that year really, really despondent. 1901, a rough year. 1903, a triumphant year. There's a year in between. Tell me about 1902. 1902 is, is the real breakthrough for the Wrights. In fact, you could almost argue it was more important than 1903. They went back, they managed to reconfigure the coefficient of lift figures that they'd been using. They created a wind tunnel here in their cycle shop and, and redeveloped all those numbers on their own, reshaped the wing based on that, developed a rudder, a controllable rudder for the glider, and in fact, seemed to solve all of their problems in 1902. The glider performed beautifully. But 1901, 1902, 1903, we're seeing quite an arc. It's amazing how quickly it all comes together. We're standing in front of their bicycle shop. How did their knowledge of bikes help with the development of the airplane? I think it helped in a few ways, one of which just knowing that the bike is inherently unstable gave them the confidence to know that the airplane could be unstable and people could still manage to master it, to fly it. So mastery over instability. Absolutely. But it also helped in, in an unusual way after that failure in 1901. They determined that they were using the wrong numbers. And the Wrights determined that by developing an earlier aerodynamic test device with a bicycle. They had a bike with a third wheel up on the handlebars and they could test different wind shapes. And those shapes weren't acting the way they should have. So that let them know that the numbers just weren't right. Then they went on to build their own wind tunnel right here in the cycle shop. They tested 48 different intricate models of different wing shapes. And using that wind tunnel, they were able to refigure all of those calculations on their own. That was the big breakthrough that allowed them to build the successful glider of 1902 and ultimately the flyer of 1903.